Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Eddie and John were two uh, lifelong friends, and as they got older together, about 40 years ago, they started uh, playing every Saturday night. They always had a friendly game of cards. But as they got older, uh, John, who was a little bit older than Eddie, his uh, uh, memory began to slip a little bit, so much that when they were uh, playing cards, he often would have to have his wife right next to him to kind of help him remember what the cards were and, and how the game was played. One Saturday night after they got done with their game, uh, Eddie said to John, John, you did really good tonight. You didn't have any problems remembering at all. What's, what's going on? And John said, well, my wife enrolled me in a, a memory school. And it seems to be paying off. And Eddie said, a memory school? What's the name of that school? I've never heard of it. And John thought for a minute and he said, well, what do you, what's that flower that's red and has thorns? And Eddie said, well, a rose. He said, oh, that's right, a rose. He looks at his wife and he says, hey, Rose, what's the name of that memory school? Uh, memory. Uh, memories, uh, remembering things, uh, we sometimes take that for granted. Most of us are able to remember uh, a lot, uh, but we kind of take that for granted until it's taken away, and then we find ourselves a little frustrated when we can't remember things as we get, as we get older. Uh, today in our Old Testament uh, reading, this is the theme for Moses as he's speaking to God's people in the book of Deuteronomy. One simple word recurs over and over again in this book, and that word is remember. Over 20 times, Moses gathers the people of God together, Israel, gathers them together, and he says that word, remember, remember. Remember what the Lord has done. Remember what, what God is planning to do. Remember what he's doing even now, Moses would say. This is right as the people of God are preparing to enter into the promised land. And Moses gathers them together and renews this covenant with them. And he begins with, remember, remember all that the Lord has done. And he says it so many times, you, you would think that people probably are like, enough already. Let's stop living in the past. Let's move on, Moses. Let's get on with it into the new land. Uh, but Moses knew that unless they remembered the past, they would have no hope for the future. And so he always uh, pulled them aside and said, remember, remember, remember to remember all that has happened. He wanted the people to remember that God had chosen them. Out of all the, peoples, all the people groups in the world, God had chosen them, the nation of Israel, to be His people, to be His prized possession and wonderful treasure. He wanted them to remember that God had chosen them. They had not chosen Him. And He wanted to, them to remember how God had shown His love and favor for them by leading them out of slavery in Egypt. He wanted them to remember over and over again how they had passed through the waters of the Red Sea in this miraculous way and had been set free from Pharaoh and the Egyptian army. He wanted them to remember, to remember. And he wanted them to remember how he took care of them uh, as they wandered there in the wilderness, how he led them with a pillar of fire uh, at night and a cloud by day, and how he provided for them heavenly food, manna, bread from heaven, and quail, meat to eat, and water from a rock. He wanted the people to remember how he had taken care of them through all those years. And he wanted them to remember also their sins. Moses often called the nation of Israel to repentance. He wanted them to remember that very often they had received from God's abundance and yet complained and grumbled. We're tired of this bread. We detest this quail meat. Uh, and he wanted them to remember how they grumbled and complained and were never, and seemingly never thankful and never satisfied with how God was leading them. He wanted them to remember their sins and to repent 
and to remember that the reason why they were wandering in the desert for 40 years was because God was testing them to see whether they would be faithful and thankful and no longer grumble and complain. So Moses wanted his people, God's people, to remember to remember the past, but he also wanted them to remember to remember the future that God had promised to lead them out of the desert into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, a beautiful, gorgeous, lush land for his people, their final home. He wanted them to remember to remember the future. And as they remembered the past, and as he remembered the future, he wanted them to live in the present and to remember the blessings that he was already showering upon them. And as they remembered all these things, as they thought about all that God had done, all that God had promised to do, and all that God was currently doing, their response was pretty simple. They should be thankful. And so it is with you and I, isn't it? Today, as we gather on Thanksgiving Day, we, of course, need to remember. We spend a lot of time remembering. We remember all that God has done for us in the past. He has chosen us by His grace and His mercy. He has called to us by His Holy Spirit. He has called us and walked us through those waters of holy baptism and claimed us as His own. He has set us free from the slavery of sin through His Son, Jesus Christ. He has done all this for us, and He continues to take care of us. He has done these things for us in the past, Hey, but He also wants us to remember each and every day our own sins. To remember that very often we also grumble and complain about all that God has done for us, thinking maybe it wasn't right or it wasn't enough. We might receive the blessings that He pours out upon us with joy and thanksgiving at first, but over time we find ourselves grumbling and complaining, wanting bigger, better, newer, faster, and we can't wait for Black Friday to get it. We find ourselves often ungrateful and unthankful. And we need to remember to remember our sins. Because if we don't remember our past, then we won't remember the great future that God has given to us. And that future has come to us through our Heavenly Father, who loves us so very much that, believe it or not, there's something that God cannot do when He looks at us. He doesn't remember. Our Heavenly Father doesn't remember. He doesn't remember our sins because Jesus, our Savior, has taken every one of those sins of thought, word, and deed, all those times we grumble and complain and we're ungrateful, Jesus took all of those sins upon Himself and He suffered and died on the cross for us and He has removed those sins from us as far as the east is from the west. So when the Heavenly Father looks at us and we confess our sins in repentance, the Heavenly Father doesn't remember our sins. They no longer exist because Christ has paid the price in full through His sacrifice on the cross and through His glorious resurrection. The Lord remembers our sins no more. And because this event that happened in the past changed the history of the world and it changed our history, this event, the most important thing that has happened to us, Jesus died and rose again. Because of this past event, we have the promise of future glory. As we remember to remember the past, we remember to remember the future. That because of Jesus' death and resurrection, life does not end in death. He has prepared for us a place, a heavenly dwelling. At the time of our death, 
Jesus is there to welcome us into the splendor of heaven, but also the promise that on the last day when he comes back, he will create a new heavens and a new earth, a land flowing with milk and honey, our permanent home of righteousness. God has taken care of our past. And he's provided for our future. And if God has done these things, will he not also take care of us right now as we live in this present time? I know that as we live now in this year 2020, we can't avoid the, the fear and the anxiety and the worry that comes with our current situation. We can't act as if it's not there. Each of us in some ways has a small measure or a large measure of worry and anxiety. But Jesus speaks to us today also, doesn't he? And he says, why do you worry? Why are you anxious? What does it gain you? What does it profit you to be worried and anxious? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got enough things to worry about. Instead, live today. Seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness and all that we need shall be provided unto us. And that's God's promise to us in the present. Does He not right now give us all that we need to support this body and life? The breath in our lungs? Every heartbeat? and our families, and friends, and loved ones, people who care for us, and love and support us? Doesn't He also give us food and drink? You're already thinking about this afternoon and evening, aren't you? Food and drink, and a house, and a home to live in, and a shelter, and clothes. Doesn't He also give us a beautiful place where we can come? and worship and the ability to worship online doesn't he give us a place to gather and receive manna from heaven Christ in his very body and blood and the bread and the wine a place to remember our baptisms when he has redeemed us a place to come and spend time with friends and our church family and to encourage and support and pray for one another has He not given us these blessings right here and now? Doesn't He also give us this wonderful, great nation in which we live? A nation unlike any other nation? With all of its freedoms to be able to do even what we're doing right now? And, and those who work in our, in our communities to care for us, to serve us, in these difficult and challenging times, the doctors and nurses and medical personnel and the, and, the, and the police department and the firefighters and the military and those serving in the armed forces and first responders, doesn't he take care of us even now in ways that we're not even aware of? Hasn't he given us so many blessings even right now? And of course he has. And if He has done all this, if God has taken care of our past, which He has through Jesus' death and resurrection, forgiven our sins, and He has promised to provide for us a future resurrection and new life on the last day, and He's promised to be here with us right now, if He's done all of this and continues to do all of this, then what do we have to be anxious about or worried about? When you and I have sharp memories and we remember all that God has done, all that God will do, and all that God is doing, what's our response? Thankfulness. Thankfulness. So, happy Thanksgiving. Amen. May the peace of God which transcends all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.